Honorable uh, Joey Salceda, Chairman of the House Committee on Ways and Means, Honorable Representatives present here today, fellow workers in government, good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to brief you today on our debt management program. Under President Duterte's administration, our debts have been designed to fund our massive investments in and for the Filipino people. We have been borrowing primarily to support the Build, Build, Build infrastructure program, which is the president's main strategy to help Filipinos lift themselves from poverty. For far too long, the Philippines underinvested in its infrastructure. The past four administrations spent only about 2% of GDP in infrastructure investments. This anemic performance led to problems of congestion and inefficiency in our ports, airports, bridges, and roads. Our poor logistical backbone discouraged new investments and business activities and took a huge toll on the domestic economy. With priorities rebalanced under President Duterte, infrastructure spending dramatically rose to 5% of GDP or double that of the previous presidencies. This turbocharged Philippine economy and it created more quality jobs for our people. Apart from infrastructure, the Duterte administration invested heavily in social services to boost human capital development. We provided universal health care coverage for our people, housing, unconditional cash transfers, free education in state colleges and universities, and free irrigation, among other programs. The annual average spending on social services of this administration in its first three years alone has overtaken the combined average annual expenditure of the past four administrations. The Duterte administration spent an average of 1.29 trillion pesos per year from 2016 to 2019 on social services while the combined average annual expenditures of the last four administrations was only 1.27 trillion pesos. With these productive investments, we achieved a remarkable feat of bringing down poverty incidence to just 16.7% in, in 2018 from 23.5% in 2015. In just four years, six million Filipinos were lifted out of poverty. At the end of 2019, despite modest growth in our outstanding debt, the Philippine government was able to bring its debt to GDP ratio to a historic low of 39.6%. This means that our investments paid off. Resources have been allocated to ensure that our economy consistently outgrew our debt. In essence, this has been our debt management strategy together with the improved revenue collection through bold tax reforms that uh, this Congress has provided us and prudent fiscal management. Our exemplary financial and debt management brought the country to the highest credit rating levels we have ever achieved. This gave us easy access to financing from our development partners and the international capital markets with very concessional rates and terms. However, the pandemic changed the game completely. Last year, the lockdowns and subsequent economic downturn pulled down our revenue collections. At the same time, the government had to spend more 
to reinforce our health system, purchase medical equipment, and procure vaccines. Expectedly, the unplanned spending needed for the pandemic response temporarily pushed up our deficit levels. Our deficit to GDP ratio expanded to 7.6% in 2020, or about double the threshold we worked so hard to maintain. Nevertheless, this level is still sustainable, considering that we had to rapidly enlarge our healthcare capacity. To fund our budget gap, we needed to borrow more. With our high credit ratings affirmed amidst the global health crisis, we were able to source emergency borrowing and float bonds at lower rates. Due to increased spending, to support both health and economic requirements, the pandemic resulted in a global trend of higher government debt to GDP ratios last year. What sets the Philippines apart, however, is that we entered 2020 with a historic low debt to GDP ratio of 39.6%. This means that we could better absorb additional borrowings than other countries whose debt ratios were already at 60% before the pandemic. Therefore, the 15 percentage point increase in our debt to GDP ratio in 2020 is still within the prescribed bounds of fiscal viability and the experience of our neighbors and rating peers globally. The sustainability of debt depends on two things, the cost and the ability to generate economic activity to pay it off. It is important to note that about 25% of our domestic economy consists of government spending. If we did not increase the level of public spending through borrowings, the domestic economy would have collapsed. This event would have inflicted Far, a far more painful toll on our people. Now, is it right to incur debt? Yes, to fund our people's needs. However, we must use our borrowings in a prudent manner. We should use them to beef up our health requirements and to generate productive economic activity. If we do not do these things, the economy will collapse even further. We have to spend wisely, and that's exactly what we have been doing. We are maintaining the pace of our Build, Build, Build program because infrastructure investments have the highest multiplier effect on economic growth. Despite the fact that our infrastructure spending last year was lower as compared to 2019, it is still way over what what it was in all previous administrations. The Build, Build, Build program literally paved the way to faster economic expansion before the pandemic struck us. This will be the cornerstone of our economic recovery. Our financing program for 2021 and 2022 reflect the same strategy. We will continue with our sustainable and prudent borrowing to fund both economic investments and the pandemic response. The financing also considers provisioning for buffers to ensure a strong cash position amidst the pandemic. With abundant liquidity in our financial system, we will continue borrowing more from our domestic sources. Both the Department of Finance and the Banco Central ng Pilipinas are in sync in ensuring that fiscal and monetary tools in our arsenal are kept sharp and ready even for a protracted global health emergency. To end, let me underscore this point. Through the length of this pandemic, the Duterte administration never lost sight of the demands of fiscal responsibility. To achieve a solid recovery, the executive and the legislature must continue to work together to fight the pandemic sustainably 
by keeping our deficit and debt ratios within reasonable levels. This will allow us to leave our finances in great shape for the next administration and the future generation of Filipinos. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, of course, uh, it's better position to answer that. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, the answer basically is uh, we, we do not uh, borrow unless it is authorized by Congress with the exception of some uh, GOCCs because that they are not some or of them are not covered by by uh, budgetary uh, requirements uh, just a point of clarification mr chairman uh, all borrowings if they require a sovereign guarantee are uh, required an approval of the monetary board Okay, even if they are GOCC, Mr. Secretary. If there, if it, if a sovereign guarantee is required, yes. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank Mr. You. Pero um, CGD, wala naman. There's never been an instance where a GOCC borrowed without government guarantee. Uh it, it, it could happen, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Uh, it could happen. The, their balance sheet may be strong enough uh, for them to incur debt without the sovereign guarantee. But let me assure you, the finance department monitors all of this. Uh, yes. Mr. Secretary, what about yung pong mga local governments? All local government borrowings, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, Honorable Congressman, also require an approval of uh, the monetary... Uh, well, uh, some of the questions I raised uh, were already answered, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, you know, the, the presentation of Secretary uh, Dominguez uh, was very impressive. Uh, I can see uh, light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, you know, uh, However, is there a downside to doubling our for our debts uh, or borrowings, uh, Mr. Secretary? What is the downside of this? Other than, of course, we have a bigger amount of payment for the interest. Uh, but what is the downside? Uh, Thank Mr. you, uh, 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 Mrs. Chairman. Uh, uh, Your Honor. Of course, every time you borrow, even as, a, as an individual, there is always a downside. Okay? But uh, the downside is not only the, the repayment, but also if uh, conditions change. Uh, there's always a risk. Uh, supposing uh, supposing uh, there's another, another pandemic of a different kind, you know, and, and you already have this heavy debt. Baka, baka it's, it's too much of a burden. It's just like any individual. You borrowed money for a house. So you're pay, paying your house payments. And then all of a sudden, somebody in your family gets a, a devastating disease. So you have to pay for that also. So the, those, the, of course, there is a downside. But the question is, what, what is your choice at the moment? You have no choice eh, uh, but to incur the debt. As I explained, uh, Mr. Ch Mrs. Chairman and uh, Your Honor, uh, as I explained, we did not want to exceed 3% uh, deficit. We, did not, we were bringing down our debt as a percentage of GDP. That, that was the trend. That was our goal. However, when you have a pandemic, you have no choice. If we did not spend money, uh, our economy would have tanked even more. You have to remember uh, that our government is almost 25% of the entire economy. It's almost 25% of the GDP. And if we do not, if we withdraw from spending, eh, mas lalo yung, ano, yung collapse ng economy. So sometimes you have no choice, but you have to do it uh, prudently and you have to invest the money in productive uh, in productive uh, activities. 
the best way we can get out of this debt is to grow out of it. That after this pandemic, we will grow at rates that, uh, that will allow us to bring down our, uh, our debt. And our cooperation with the Congress uh, through uh, the, the past, uh, uh, since 2016, has allowed our economy to grow fast and reduce our debt to the lowest it has ever been for maybe 30 years. Our debt to GDP was only 39.5%. That is very, very low. When I came in, in 2016, it was 42 or 43%. We brought it, even though we borrowed more, as a percentage of GDP, it was less. And it was more affordable. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, is Secretary Dominguez still around? Yes. Uh, there's a few questions. First, on the Biasan bill, do you see, can you live with the debt management board? Uh, uh, I didn't hear that, uh, Your Honor. Uh, there's a proposed debt management board, which is almost like a DBCC. Uh, uh, we will uh, submit our uh, formal comment on this bill. However, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I think that uh, flexibility is very important. I think that uh, the ability to act fast is, uh, is very is, uh, crucial. And uh, quite frankly, at present, we have all the, uh, we have all the uh, um, procedures uh, already and the, bo and the different sets of uh, institutions Monitors. to look, look at our debt, uh, including the monetary board, which is independent, the DBCC uh, and the ICC uh, in, in the NEDA. So I think we have sufficient uh, oversight already uh, at this point in time. But again, uh, allow me to uh, submit our formal uh, response uh, to your okay. committee. Thank I you. think it's a no, but uh, are you uh, amenable to, is there a particular section of the DOF which can be called debt management office? Or yes, under? we do. Yes, we do. And that is really the international finance group. And it works together with the implementing agency of the debt, which is the Department of the Treasury. So I guess um, it's a question of, uh, do you want it, uh, you don't need to institutionalize it? Well, at the moment, as I said, the procedures are not only uh, in the Department of Finance, it is also uh, in the office of the president because we ask them every time we have to incur debt, we have to get uh, special powers from them. And then it is further reviewed, uh, not only by the office of the president, but the monetary board. So it's not only the Department of Finance here that is involved in debt, uh, in, in incurring debt or in incurring debt. On top of that, we have the DBCC, uh, which presents an annual plan. And we meet quite regularly to review our uh, different situations. So there are many institutions already uh, with uh, very uh, strict procedures and oversight for, over uh, the debt of the country. Okay, are you comfortable with uh, the Scudero bill which just proposes instead of just a COCODA, uh, uh, debt management, which will include domestic? By the way, all of those items already include the foreign and domestic debt. I am not talking only of foreign debt. The Office of the President is involved in domestic debt, the Monetary Board, the DBCC, and of course the uh, IFG in the uh, Department of Finance and the implementing agency, which is the Bureau of Treasury. So it, it encompasses both foreign 
and domestic debt already? Your Honor. Because uh, right now, it's only NEDA that reports on the ODA through a COCODA, which I don't know why I have. I've never... Eh, na, sino ba ang ano, head ng COCODA? Ako? <laughs> Sir, but the Speaker and the Senate President uh, should target uh, the Congressional Office. Are the chairpersons? Sir, kayo at saka... Kayo po, sir. Your Honor. But the Honor. Speaker and the Senate President has to... Yes, uh, Secretary Dominguez. Uh, the Monetary Board also reports to the Congress on uh, ODA. Anyway, because and local the... finances, I know. Uh, I don't know. So, the... so it is not only NEDA. Thank you. Yeah, but uh, there is a spe very specific uh, you know, that we just uh, laser focus on the debt management. Essentially, I think there's nothing you know, um, obnoxious about it uh, because right now we just have a COCODA that is a law under 8182 which created COCODA, now we have a COC on debt management. I don't think you will feel uncomfortable with it. Uh, uh, comfort is not a matter of, uh, of uh, <laughs> consideration. You're, yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I just need, I just, no, I'm, I used the wrong word. Um, um, but uh, please continue. Uh, I have nothing more to say, Your Honor. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Um, no, I cannot just, I uh, know, uh, a debt cap. So we can finish all these bills. Uh, uh, may, I, may, may I make a general comment on the debt cap as of, uh, as of now? Uh, without, uh, we, uh, please rest assured, uh, Mr. Chairman, that we will submit a formal uh, 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 a formal uh, position on this debt cap. As you know, As you know uh, excuse me. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Uh, as you know, uh, Indonesia put a debt cap, uh, has a debt cap law, and I think, uh, and a, a deficit law. And uh, the moment the pandemic struck, they threw it out. Okay, so what's the point of having one? If we when, when you really when you really are going to breach it, you just throw away the law. So I think uh, the important thing is that uh, the Congress already has the power when it looks at the budget uh, to determine a debt cap. And essentially, the determination of the debt cap is the determination of how much we spend. So that is the real debt cap. It is already in your in your hands. There is, a, I don't think at this point in time, there is a need to put a, a debt cap and make uh, and make the country very inflexible. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. I, Chair, yes. Uh, before uh, you end, uh, you you made a very good uh, dissertation on this, uh, Mr. <laughs> Chair. I I. Totally agree with your uh, C plus I plus G plus X minus M. Uh, any of those, uh, the main driver there is uh, government, as uh, you indicated yeah. earlier. Yeah. yeah. Now, the question I have is, uh, how many percent is our domestic borrowing compared to the international borrowing or foreign borrowing? Si Leia po ay may thumb rule, 75-25, but I don't know the actual. Na National Treasurer Leia? Sir, then you're right po. Uh, and, and the current portfolio is about 70% domestic. 70%. Ah, lumobo dahil sa COVID. No? Yes, sir. And we source because of the ample um, liquidity onshore. Mm -hmm. I think it will be favorable to the economy if we have bigger uh, domestic borrowing because we are generating income for the country also. And that would mean that uh, we have a lot of uh, available cash in, in the country. And if you use this for uh, investment uh, through the infrastructure that we build, 
I think it will be good for the country so that uh, we will not also be affected by the uh, volatility of the uh, foreign oh, exchange. Uh, the foreign exchange. So I think uh, if we even make it bigger, I think that will be good because the money will just circulate in the country. Anthony, you just justified there. Uh, sa lahat ng national treasurer, si Ilay ang pinakatakot sa forex parity problem. Tama ba? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, may make a comment, please? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Congressman Go is uh, absolutely right. Uh, actually, uh, the, one of the biggest reasons to borrow domestically is to reduce the forex uh, risk. Uh, the second point I would like to make is uh, what I mentioned in my talk that. Uh, the monetary and fiscal authorities are completely in sync in addressing the problem. In the monetary side, we uh, actually reduced the uh, reserve requirements of the banks. And by doing that, we injected uh, a, lot of, uh, uh, a lot of liquidity into the system to allow the, the the private banks to finance our uh, infrastructure uh, uh, investments. They also, uh, it, it also turned out to be the right policy because uh, when the COVID struck, we had ample domestic resources to, uh, to, to uh, source our funding from. Thank you very much. Uh, what about the contribution of uh, the private sector in terms of projects under the PPP program? Uh, do we have any number that will show of how much uh, are the projects being undertaken under the PPP that can probably help us further in uh, improving uh, the performance of our economy, uh, Mr. Uh... Chair? Okay. I, 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 uh, I don't know uh, who, want, who wants, uh, uh, Secretary Dominguez, would you like to uh, thank you. respond? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Uh, again, uh, Your Honor, Congressman Go, that's a very good question. Uh, first of all, uh, our uh, infrastructure projects are actually contracted out by the government to the private sector. <laughs> So the private contracting companies actually need financing uh, for while, while the projects are not being uh, paid for yet by the, by the uh, DPWH. That's number one. Secondly, we do have a number of PPP projects. However, let me just point out, uh, uh, Your Honors, that uh, when this administration took over, we reviewed a number of the PPP projects with regards to the with, with regards to the contingent liabilities that they uh, that they brought up. First of all, we have to emphasize that there is no such thing as uh, no cost to the government. There is no such thing as that. There is always a cost, and the cost is either borne by the government or by the taxpayer or by the user. So there is no such thing as a PPP project that is, that is no cost to the government or to the nation. So we, must, we had to look at a lot of the PPP projects to find out how much liability actually is going to be borne by either the government in terms of uh, guarantees of uh, revenue or guarantees of uh, return on investment, uh, how much is really being borne by the uh, consumers, how much is really being borne by the taxpayer. So uh, we took a look at that and quite frankly, we were quite surprised at the amount of liabilities 
that this uh, that this so-called PPP projects in the past had generated, and uh, we are uh, at this point in time preparing a report uh, on that. The PPP Center is preparing a report on that. However, we did undertake uh, PPP projects, but we ma we limited. Uh, the liabilities of uh, the government as well as the users. A good example is the water project for uh, the Clark Air ba the the Clark uh, development. The contracts for the water projects there are totally different from the contracts that we found in uh, in. Uh, by, by Manila and Manila Water. So that's why the president uh, ordered the, uh, the innovation of those contracts to protect the consumers and to protect the taxpayers. Uh, we also did a very uh, innovative uh, PPP project for the airport operation of Clark, which I must say is much better in terms of... Uh, contingent liability management than the PPP projects that was done for the airport in Cebu. So again, uh, we have come, we, I, I don't have an exhaustive list of the uh, PPP projects undertaken by this administration. I will do that, I will submit it to uh, this committee and uh, you will see not only that the PPP projects are are uh, very well thought out, but that the contingent liability management, um, uh, the liabilities to the government as well as the liabilities to the taxpayer are much uh, improved. Thank you. CGD? Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, may, may I respond? Yes. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, we already uh, mandate the GOCCs to invest their funds basically in uh, government uh, securities. So we are already using the funds of the GOCCs uh, to fund our uh, debt program. program. For, instance, for, the for instance, the funds of PDIC, the funds of GSIS, the funds of SSS are already invested in government securities. Number two, uh, we do not borrow from the local uh, banks for projects, okay? We, we don't borrow them for specific projects. Uh, we issue bonds and uh, we determine uh, how much we are willing to pay in interest. And uh, we also uh, uh, you offer uh, government securities to uh, the domestic uh, the domestic financial institutions that are not part of the government. So thank you very much. Uh, okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Dominguez, for clarifying. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Secretary, uh, is there a limitation that they cannot buy ROP still there? I, I beg your pardon? Uh, I know like uh, cash reach GOCCs like PPA, uh, they are prevented from buying ROPs. I don't know any prevention for that. Uh, Leia? Yeah. Can um, I ask Leia? Uh, uh, Secretary and uh, Mr. Chair, there's no prohibition for them to buy our uh, issued ROPs. But apparently, when I talk to them, they seem to be like uh, there is um, an unsaid ano, guidance. Wala, wala, sir. Ba baka lang in terms of the denomination because minimum is $200,000. But since we are going to issue our retail dollar bonds and the uh, minimum denomination is only $300, then that would provide greater access, especially to our small uh, savers, small investors. That, that's I, I think I, I at least that clarifies because I keep whenever I talk to them most of their funds are in domestic uh, uh, instruments. 
I haven't seen a single, I think even pag-ibig has no ROP. Ah, uh, kasi sir, baka lang yung mismatch. Uh, excuse me. We do not encourage them, uh, Mr. Chairman, to speculate in foreign currency. Okay, so there's a reason. 